We all come out of this like school that puts you in that box and we all have to figure out how to break out in life and, and walk our own path. It's true. Yeah. yeah. I think and what, walk it nobly. Oh! Walk it nobly. <laughs> Woo! That was good. Was that punny? That was really that was funny. Good. That was good. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I guess it's not just fly puns we've got. <laughs> <laughs> but puns on the fly. Oh! <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's Courtney Polis, and welcome to another impassioned episode of Under All is the Land. I am here with my rock star co-stars, Silke <laughs> Fernald. Hello. And Dominique Madden. <sighs> Hi. So um, today we are talking about transformation, which I always love. Um, and before we bring on our esteemed guest, Walker Noble, we are going to have a little chat about what's going on in L.A. today. It's the city Ooh. council. It's in the news. The tea is hot. The tea is hot. It's going to burn you. Oh, my gosh. Ouch. Yeah, so just for perspective for people who don't know what's happening, which if you live How in LA, not? are you, you under? Have, even outside of LA, you have to know. But um, the city council members, so three of the city council members, were um, uh, were busted. Fa- were busted um, on a recording from I think it was like late last year, where they were discussing how they could redistrict or you know redraw the lines of the districts to benefit Latinos. Okay. And um, in that conversation, there were a lot of, like, slanders being said. There was a lot of, like, discussion regarding races. And, you know, uh, Nerys Martinez went to the extent of calling uh, Mike Bonin's son a monkey in Spanish. Um, Wow. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty gnarly stuff. I mean, you know, they, they talked about, I mean, they talked about various things that were just, like, they shouldn't be discussed in a meeting, but also I think there are rules against these meetings being held without transparency mm-hmm. and without like people being able to be a part of these meetings. Well, mm-hmm. you know, in real estate, we always say like who you work with matters, but mm-hmm. in I think like we're now seeing that who you elect really, really matters. So we get these ballots in the mail. They give these kind of like milk toast descriptions of who the candidates are. But you, if you are not really involved, you don't know what these people really mm-hmm. stand for or who they really are. I mean, I personally, and you know, this is my pet peeve, but you know, watch the city council fail the city of Los Angeles throughout COVID and especially beyond. Thankfully, now there's an end in sight for the, uh, eviction moratorium and the state of emergency were the last city in the entire country to let go of that. And, and I'm not surprised that these people have their own personal agendas that affect all Los Angeles that we're not privy to. Yeah, totally. I think it's just so important to read when we get those ballots in the mail with like a hundred people on there, nobody really care. Or nobody knows them yeah. very well. Like you said, we need to research before we put a little checkbox. Yeah. No, we're going to bring somebody on this show yeah. to talk about the candidates and to talk about the ballot props because I feel like there should be specialists, people who it's their job yeah. to be able to explain what these, who these people are and what they truly stand for before we go to the ballot box. And in this case, it's like another revelation, yep. which shouldn't be a revelation that guess what? Sometimes the people that you're voting for are bigots yeah. and mm-hmm. self-interested and despicable human beings. And mm-hmm. they ought to resign. You know, and she didn't even fully resign at first. Yep. That was mm-hmm. crazy. Oh, I'm going to step down, but I'm still going to be on the city council. The audacity. Mm-hmm. Even even she even, should be ashamed of herself. Even her resignation letter, if you've read it, it is like a slap in the face. Not a single apology in it. You know, actually it talks about everything she's done for the community. Yeah. And actually ends off to say, and this is the funniest line to me, to all the little Latina girls, oh. I hope that I've inspired you to dream bigger than, you know, <sighs> than you thought that you could. Yeah. And it's like, excuse me, miss. 
She's trying to save her face. You want to encourage people to be like you, who have now just further corrupted our city council, which has already been rampant with different corruption. Well, what what that letter tells you says she doesn't think there's a problem with what she did. Yeah. And she's trying to save face. And now she's trying to pull a whatever, some big speech out of her hat, you know, inspiring and da 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 da. It's like, don't use that platform to, to, to give that message when you have fucked up so badly. And it's don't like, what, dare. what would have happened if they wouldn't have been caught? Right. How many yeah. of these conversations are happening without people knowing, without transparency, in private, in our city government, but also in our state government, in our federal government? It's so despicable to me mm-hmm. that we count, we have, we are bound as, as people who live in LA to the whim and will of the, this very small select obviously biased group of people it affects every single one of us and they are seemingly unvetted there's yep. no leadership no, and meanwhile we know everything about every presidential candidate we know what whatever coffee brand they drink before we go into elections but we know nothing about any of these other names on the ballot. It's just a sea of names and i find myself sometimes when i don't have time to research or it gets overwhelming i just don't vote even check yeah. i just don't, don't check. check a box i think or most, I go, most people just vote their party yeah or i just vote the party i'm like what on what, what's the woman oh, i'll go for the female on my my party i'm like okay this could how wrong can it be well yeah, it's fucking, it's gonna be really, really fucking wrong. wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. Know, the, the scary thing is that you wouldn't know unless you overheard these conversations right. because these kinds of conversations are ones that only typically happen in private, you right? Know? And so, like, you know, like obviously, we've seen other people get taken down, like Mark Ridley Thomas and you know, Jose Huizar. I'm not sure how you say his last name, I think it's I think Huizar. That, I think that's right, but you know, you know, with, with this particular situation, you had. Three council members, you know, um, Norris Martinez, Gil Cedillo, and Kevin DeLeon, all meeting with uh, the head of the labor board. Um, what's his name? Ron, Ron Herrera, I think his name is, you know? And this is a tight-knit conversation. It's a four-people conversation. If there hadn't been someone recording, mm-hmm. none of us would know mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. their entire goal in their figuring out how to redistrict, which then they then later on went to do, and it actually did impact at least one candidate, which, um, you know, I mean, whether you like her or not, uh, Nithia Ramon. Oh, good. I hate yeah. her. <laughs> but, you know, but... She is the worst. Yeah. And apparently they believe that, too. Oh, gosh. <laughs> no, that's terrible. There's one thing because they, they redrew the line so that it, it, it you know, so that it worked against her mm-hmm. in yeah. her district. But, mm-hmm. you know, like, the fact that you have people who are able to, like, do these things, like, who are also the ones who would be benefiting from the move should make you question whether they should actually be the ones making that decision in the first Absolutely. place. Absolutely. Yep. You know? Absolutely. Yep. It's age old, though. I mean, Republicans gerrymander. Everybody knows it. Like, And then, you know, they accuse Democrats of redistricting. And, you know, I mean, this is like something that needs to be um, dealt with on a, on a higher level. But it just seems like the city council runs like wild with whatever ideas they want without any accountability and finally they're accountable and even when they're held to accountability they still to have a hard time being accountable like oh. they're still on the city council Two of right they're still there yes kevin de Resign. leon gil cedillo step the fuck down get down yes. period step goodbye the fuck down. i'll be the next one in that city council meeting screaming at your ass so that you guys can't continue with okay it. i'll be there filming the it down. i'll yeah. be okay. there That's filming the it so you see it affects people to the point yeah. of passion and f-bombs and and that's the reality of the impact that it's having on those of us who actually live here. And that's real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's real. You know, because it's like, you know, you're, you're in a city that is a melting pot. Like, mm-hmm. a city that has so many amazing people from so many different walks of life. And to, like, chastise several different demographics in that city that you're supposed to be supporting, mm-hmm. that's crazy to me. Like, you know, not only were they, you know, talking horribly about black people, but to talk about Jewish people, about Armenians. Like, this is our culture, you know? And and and, and if you're trying to take down any of them, you know, I, I just feel like the, the, like, even though your goal is to help Latino people in the city... You can't, you, you can't, can't do that at the expense others. of other yeah. people. Yeah. And, and also, let's face it, a lot of those people that they're mentioning have already had representation issues. It's like they're already coming from under, you know, like the short end of the stick already. Why are you going to make it worse? Yeah. You know, when you're supposed to be for the people, you're not elected to only represent this one tiny group. Like, 
It's so it's just sad because you were yeah, power you, hungry and yeah. disgusting. You would Honestly, think that this kind of race, yeah, the, you would think ashamed. this kind of racism only happens in, in small towns where it's mostly white old men mm -hmm. whatever but in like you said la where there's everybody oh, everything crazy, all man. at once we're all together like that the word racism even comes up in a town in a city like this but people who experience are not surprised they're just outraged i think like mm. to the fact that our government is still political i mean you know politically charged against like African-American people is no surprise to people who are African-American, mm -hmm. right? right? Like the fact that your police department might be biased. That's not a big surprise, right? right? Mm -hmm. There's a reason that we question everything. Right. <laughs> and whether it's for us or against us, but things like this just further perpetuate that. It's like, how am I, I can't even trust my council person right. to have my best interest right. at heart. Mm -hmm. Right. How... <sighs> It's, Who is also from arguably a minority group yeah, where you would exactly. think you don't you know? <laughs> right. Like why? Like it's <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's just crazy. so yeah. wrong. So crazy. So there you go. And that's how we feel about that. <laughs> now <laughs> we're gonna turn the tables for a second and invite an Acme client and also one of our great friends and an extremely accomplished person and um, talented artist, Walker Noble. Having me. I love the shirt, by the way. So, this is my shirt. I designed it. Oh, oh wow. yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. What, a, what a segue. That's cool. <laughs> well, let's introduce you, actually, because hey, you're you. a man of many talents. Thank you. So, thank you. Um, Walker Noble, you have, uh, yeah. you can introduce yourself. You don't yes. need me to do it. Yes. Um, <laughs> hey, my name is, do I need to talk to the camera? Um, you can. That's yeah, your yeah, camera yeah. right there. Uh, my name is Walker Noble, uh, here in LA, based out of here, based here in LA. Um, Courtney was my wonderful realtor. Uh, we recently bought a home, and um, this is how I met this motley crew of wonderful women. And <laughs> I'll here take we it. Are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm an artist. Uh, mo most importantly, I'm a husband, a father, an artist, um, entrepreneur, and um, I wear many hats. And uh, let's get into it. Okay. Yeah, let's get yeah. into it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I didn't design this. Okay. No. <laughs> so first, let's start with where you're from. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm originally from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, grew up on the east side of town and moved to San Francisco when I was about 25. Lived there for a couple of years, moved back to Atlanta, and I always knew I wanted to get back to the West Coast. And uh, moved back in 2009, and I've been here ever since. Okay. Yeah. And prior to COVID, what yeah. were you doing for a living? Wow, that's a great question. Um, so uh, <laughs> I did a lot of things, but I always had a corporate job. Um, I was in sales. And it basically, I, I viewed it as my sponsor, if you will, for my dreams, right? Uh, much like a lot of people here in LA. I, I had love a, that. Yeah. yeah. I've never heard anyone say that yeah, like that, but I love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the job was my sponsor. I definitely, it wasn't the end for me. I knew that, you know, I wanted to do more, but, you know, bills needed to be paid. Um, so I had a corporate job. I was in sales. And then the nature of the business that I was working for, we sold products to offices. And when, you know, March happened and the world shut down, there was no one else to sell to because there was no offices. People were not working in offices anymore. And um, that's when the whole shift happened. So let's talk about that yeah, shift. Yeah, yeah. So you you were like, OK, my job is basically disappeared. Right. Now what? Right. And yeah. what'd you do? So I was living. It's all serendipitous. Um, I met my wife our in 2015, our second date was at this place called the Artist Brewery Lofts in Lincoln Heights. It's the largest uh, artist commune, uh, they say, in the world, actually. And so, you know, I've always been an artist. It was something I always did, like, on the side. But, um, you know, you're not really allowed to have dreams, if you will, in certain places. Like, you're expected to get a job and do the uh, whole corporate thing, follow the rules, follow the rules yeah. whatever, right? Um, so I, I, I say that to say, years, years forward, I'm still living here at the, at the Brewery Artist Lofts, and we actually move in together and i remember when the pandemic happened and she said why don't you get back into your artwork you already live in this community you're already doing art again why not give it a try from a business standpoint and that's what we did how'd you do it yeah um so at first you know i was afraid to start selling stuff because people were at home and out of out of work and everything like that but then my wife said you know what there's people at home that need joy, they need happiness, and art does that for a lot of people. If they can afford to buy your art, and it's not super expensive, they can. If they can't, they can't. 
and that's okay. So I had to put myself out there. So I started, you know, a little website. Well, actually, my wife made the website. Let's hold on. Let me just. She's say the this. wind beneath your yeah, wings. Let me let me just say <laughs> that when they make the statement, you know, behind every great man is a good woman. Not just behind me, but beside me, if not just in front of me a lot of times as well. <laughs> um, you know, I have to credit all my success to my wife. Uh, she has been, you know, she she set up the business for me. She did all the infrastructure, all the back end so I could just create and kind of just run with it. She's actually a school teacher, a uh, special education teacher uh, by trade. So, you know, that's her passion in life. And um it's actually her company, Walker Noble is. Um, okay. You know, I'm just the face and okay. do the work. But <laughs> Let's go. It all goes to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she owns you. <laughs> she, yes. <laughs> That's how it's yeah. supposed to be. Her and my daughter, yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure, for sure. No, so what happened, um, believe it or not, um, shout out to EB of Sunbeam Vintage in Highland Park. The, she, she, she gave me a shout out on Instagram, and I'll never forget that day. We went from selling like, you know, one or two orders, whatever. You know, we just started the website. And that day, we got like 200 orders. We had, Whoa. We had wow. no way to fulfill it. We had, and that was like the power of social media, right? We had no way to fulfill the orders. We had no packaging, nothing, because we weren't expecting that kind of influx in business. And, you know, my wife got online and she did her research. She ordered boxes, ordered, you know, plastic sleeves, the whole shebang. And we finally got the business truly up and running just because of that one surge in business. And, you know, I'm proud to say that since, you know, it was like March or whatever of like 2020, there hasn't been a day since to this day that we haven't had an order come through from from a customer. So it's been a really, knock on wood, it's been a really good uh, thing. So to break it down, it's like you had this kind of like startup website where you were creating pieces that were selling, like were they prints or what were they? Yeah, so I was- a visual artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was selling at markets and things like that. And I was doing a lot of painting still and canvases. I had some placements in hotels and things like that. So I kind of had a, almost a litmus test, if you will, of what was popular with clientele and what kind of art sold and what didn't sell. Mm -hmm. So that kind of set me up for that. Um, and then when the opportunity, what they say, luck is preparation meeting opportunity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, when the opportunity hit, we were prepared. Um, believe it or not, despite not having all this stuff, I was prepared and knowing what the customer wanted, what was popular, what people liked. So I had to adjust the business from like doing like one-off paintings and things like that because it was just too slow to now, um, you know, taking original pieces. And reproducing them. Reproducing them. On so a, you on had to level. find somebody who could print yes. volume. yes. And that person that you found ended up right being like a key piece of your success. Like you found this person yeah. and then took some opportunity there too. Yeah. Talk about that. So crazy story. Um, a very large retailer that I'll remain unnamed for now, but I don't know if I can mention it. But um, mm-hmm. very, very large retailer. They came to me early on and said, hey, is this walking over? So yeah, they found me on Instagram. Um, we want to create like 25,000 pieces, whatever. Right. And I'm used to selling like one or two pieces to a customer. Right. And by the way, we want them framed under glass. We want them shipped a certain way, UPC codes, the whole shebang. I mean, we're talking like a full on manufacturing factory type deal. There was no way that I could do this. No way. There, I did not have a fact. I didn't have the setup, anything. So my response to them was, is that it? And they said, no, this is a very small order that we start off with, you know, <laughs> Our, our normal orders are like thousands more. I said, okay, great, because I thought this order was too small for me. I had no way to get this done, but I was not going to say no to this opportunity. And that's the power of saying yes, right? So I get off the phone, and my wife looks at me, and she says, figure it out. And she went back to doing what she was doing. <laughs> so this is primetime COVID. We're talking Tiger King COVID. I'm not talking Squid Game COVID. We're talking primetime, <laughs> you know, quarantine, whatever, right? So at the time... Orders were being turned left and right because retailers couldn't keep up, you know, doors were being shuttered, you know, whatever it may be. So my plan was I'm going to call the manufacturer. I'm going to show him the PO from this reputable company. He's going to front me the money and we're going to go from there. Because keep in mind, when you work for a lot of these companies, there's 90 day terms. Meaning if you place the order, they place the order in January, they don't pay you till the end of March, if not April. Mm -hmm. So as a maker, you have to front the money for production. Right. With wow. no guarantee that they will take it. That they're they're gonna take the order. Wow. wow. That's the risk that, that you take. That can bankrupt people. Absolutely, one hundred percent. So what what normally happened before before COVID, they had trade shows in Vegas where they would have companies that would make that kind of art for the large retailers. And they had the money, right? They're multi million dollar companies. It was no big deal if they took a fifty thousand, seventy thousand dollar hit. 
on production. And the reason why they didn't really approach artists such as myself is because, because we couldn't scale up quickly enough. So I called about 10 manufacturers in a week and all of them said, no, at this current moment, we can't do this because of just the state of the world. And I know it's a reputable company, but we're not willing to take the risk. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I go back to the, uh, uh, to the retailer and we have a meeting and I said, Hey guys, I can't do it. And they were like, see, this is why, you know, we don't work with artists of your size. I said, Oh, wait, 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 it's not me. It's you. Word on the street is, at this moment, because of retail, not just you, but retail is hurting right now just because of just the world. It's not that I can't. It's just that nobody wants to work with me at the moment, you know, so whatever. But I said, look, let's not make this contentious. Let's make this work. Partner me with a manufacturer that you trust and that you know that's willing to take the risk, and let's see what we can do. So they did. Hmm. I meet with the manufacturer, and he says, all right, Walker, here's the deal. Before you, were go before you met me, you planned on getting this manufactured yourself, and you planned on making a profit of 7 to $9 per piece on thousands of pieces, right? Great margin. It sounds like a little, but trust me, it's not. It's a great margin for that kind of art, whatever it may be. Here's the deal. I'm willing to take all the risk. I'll do all the manufacturing, everything. However, you're taking a haircut. You're going to go from $9 a piece to the deal that we made, which was substantially less than that. However, I assume no risk. I put up no money. I do nothing but send him a file of the artwork and he takes all the risk. So as I'm leaving the factory, I look around and I said, wait a minute, this place is huge. Is this all for that one client? Oh no, I represent over 20 retailers. Okay. <laughs> With that being said, <laughs> the plot thickens. everything that I don't sell to them, I want you to be my exclusive manufacturer, my agent, if you will. And I want you to sell every single piece of art that we don't sell to them. I want you to pitch it to every single one of your clients. That order went from, a, you know, a few thousand pieces to over 50,000 pieces in one week, because now I'm being sold in about 17 to 20 major retailers. As we speak. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah. And that first retailer did not ask for exclusivity? No. Wow. No. Yeah. That's so that awesome. changes the game, doesn't it? But you know. They did, but I told them no. Okay. Because I said, I'm not going to cut myself off at the knees and not work with anyone else because I'm so reliant on you to place orders. Mm -hmm. Right. I said, as long as I'm not selling the exact same products, of course, it's going to be in the same vein because I have a style of art. Right. However, you guys get first look. I'll give you, you know, whatever, you know, you look at that first, whatever you don't want. Just allow me to sell to everyone else and we can, we can roll. And that's what we do. So in real estate, you know, like value propos propositions are really important. Like knowing what it is that you bring to the table and right. being able to kind of hold your ground whenever sure. people are trying to negotiate or discount you or whatever. Yep. It's so critical. Yep. It's, and in the moment where it's high pressure, you need the money, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's like, I need to pay my bills too. Mm -hmm. But being able to say, I would rather have work with people who know my value and, and are willing to work with me understanding my value is critical. So Absolutely. it's very similar. It's like you could have completely out of desperation, just out of like not knowing or feeling like, oh, I just need this one deal to go through. You could have done it differently mm -hmm. and not ended up where you are right now. Yeah. Or you could but, have been intimidated by the big name. Yeah. yeah. Of the retailers. And, and let's also talk about the shot. moment. This mm -hmm. is a moment where businesses are shutting down. Everybody has anxiety. Yeah. And he looks at this moment and goes, it's an opportunity for me. Now I'm, on, I'm, the, I'm the only game in town and mm -hmm. created something new, a new way of doing it that ultimately, you know, yeah. has led to, yeah. you know, tremendous amount of success. Yeah. And so because of and that, I, and I want to I want to bring this back to how you and I met, too. Um, because of this success with this one retailer and now with the, all, all the other retailers, um, the name got out there. I don't have thousands and thousands of followers. It's not about that, right? You can be a micro-influencer that has a very strong influence with 10,000 followers in a very specific niche. And that's what I have instead of just being all, with all these fake followers and millions and millions mm -hmm. and millions. So large retailers then found me because they were looking. You know, I, I have to, I'd be remiss to say this. The death of George Floyd, the unfortunate death of George Floyd, definitely opened up a lot of doors for people of color and artists and makers and everyone else. How so? It gave people 
a new, uh, I would say, awakening, if like you will. Like a new consciousness. Like a new consciousness. Um, people started opening up their eyes because it was just right in front of you. You saw it. And anyone with any humanity was like, this isn't right. 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 And because of that, and just what was going on in the world and just, just the amalgamation of, of that and COVID and everything else all combined, um, the doors, if you will, or the books, if you will, were opened up to people, um, to women, to, to men, of, men of color, women of color, you name it, BIPOC, you know, creators, whatever it may be. And, um, you know, it, it's sad that it took that for it to happen, um, you know, and, and, I, and I wish that never happened, but I can say that that was one of the positive effects, if you can count that as a positive. I mean, there's nothing positive about anyone dying. Um, it's more awareness and like kind of corporate accountability for what, where they're opening doors. You had a lot of businesses that now were approaching me, very large retailers that, are, that have approached me, where some of them I've turned down. Um, not all money is good money. Mm -hmm. I've had some retailers who I knew, or at least I felt in my heart that, this was a publicity grab. This was right. a play. This wasn't really a long-term partnership. Um, it wasn't really out of uh, a, a place of authenticity. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and like the so, Bank of America zero like money a, down. The, the guilt offer. Like yeah. The, yeah. 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 Oh, PR stunt. PR yeah. stunt. It was a PR, PR stunt. stunt. And, you know, I've walked away from some deals, too. And people would say, well, oh, that was a huge bag. How can you walk away from that? Not all money is good money. Mm. Yeah. Not all money is good money. Yeah. We have that experience as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we turn people down too. Yeah. And to go back to what you said about being in a market that's volatile and still saying that this is a great time to do it. So quick story about how Courtney and I met. Um, I was following her for years on, on Instagram and I happened to be at Atwater Village eating at my favorite acai place, Ritual Acai. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> those are my guys over there. Um, and I was sitting outside and she walked by and I was like, Courtney, hey. and she was like, what are you doing? And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm eating, whatever. She's like, well, I'm on the way to a meeting. Are, did you buy? Have you, you know, are you still renting? I was like, I'm still renting. She was like, you're bullshitting. Like, we need to go ahead and buy something. You're just giving money away. Let's just try. No, let's get a little deeper into this because yeah. you actually had all the excuses. Well, mm -hmm. my rent is so cheap and I don't want to be in a multiple offer situation. Yeah. I don't like being a multiple offer. I'm not going to overpay That's for real. something. That's real. And I was like jumping Jump every in. hurdle for, yeah. with yeah. you. And now and keep you were in mind, receptive, to, I was, receptive to it. I was. You, you put me in the game. And we closed on our house November of last year. So right before, you know, everything jumped up as far as uh, mortgage rates, whatever. So we were still in the threes. And we were in that market together mm -hmm. with houses. I mean, we're talking a million over asking. I mean, people weren't even like they were just bidding off of emotion. Didn't even make sense. Right. right. Um, you know, 40 offers on one home. Houses going into escrow within like three days or whatever. It was yeah, ridiculous. It was crazy. And yeah. we got to a point where, you know, you gave me the best advice. Courtney was like... Because I wasn't going to give up. That just wasn't in my nature, right? My wife was like, she was so she was pregnant. She was like eight months pregnant. Like yeah, she was like she super was pregnant. pregnant. She stopped going on open houses. Like I literally saw the house that we ended up buying by myself. And um, Courtney said, let's start looking for houses that have been on the market for 30 plus days that are out of your price range. And I was like, wow, what a concept. I was like, okay. I was like, I'm going to switch the, the, the Zillow search and the Redmond, whatever search, whatever. I'm going to switch that search to like higher than what it was expected. And she was right. And the house that we found, um, I told, because remember we had a house where like the, uh, the inspection didn't come through well, right. whatever. And so I told my wife, I said, look, if the inspection comes out clean and everything else is good and it's just cosmetic, we're in there. Because that's, I, I'm a designer. I can do that. Like yeah. that's nothing. Um, if the engine is good, but all we got to worry about is reupholstering the seats. Cool. Like we're good. Right. <laughs> right? right. right. <laughs> That's all we need. And that was the house that we found. Well, that's the thing is that you do have to, if you want to really be successful in buying real estate, you have to figure out where your yep. strengths are. So if you're an all cash buyer yeah. and your dad has lots of money, you can play in those, in the sizzle with the steakhouses. Yep. But if you're like just getting in and you actually can add some value and as a designer and yep. as somebody who has like a design instinct, you already saw partnerships. It was like, ding. Thing. Yeah. And you did do a partnership I on did. that one, right? I did with and West that's Elm. public. We can yes. talk about that yes, now, yes, yeah? Yes, it's public. Okay, yes, yes, so yes. let's talk about it. Yeah, so uh, West Elm, a uh, wonderful partner of mine, uh, they actually approached me. We started selling wall art together. And, you know, I came to them and said, look, you know, we're doing well. We're doing a lot of business together. Let's let's extend this relationship. Let's expand it. Let's, let's be official. And um, they were kind enough to gift my baby a nursery because the baby was on the way. 
And um, I came to them and was like, hey, you know, I just bought this new house. Um, wink, wink. <laughs> I think it would be nice, West you know, Elm, to do a whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> to do a whole thing. So, yeah, so we collaborated together and designed my home, did a full shoot. And, you know, I have a line with them now and everything like that. So. Wow. That's amazing. This is what I'm saying. It's like, it's like, think about, just like, let's just like canonize it for a second. COVID happens, you're selling a product to offices yep. that falls apart. Yep. And in a span of like a couple of weeks, you've created a possibility for yourself that yep. ultimately involves like huge retailers, yes. hundreds of thousands of orders, yes. buying a house for your new family, yes. getting like, it furnished, getting it furnished, Elf. designed by a major <clears throat> retailer. I mean, like it's all your manifestation though. Yeah. It's, it's, because it, you yeah. believe you deserve that. Yeah, it, it was it was a definitely a dream come true. Um, people ask me if I'm shocked and I'm gonna say no. And yeah, not, you made it happen. Yeah, no. I, I'm not being like arrogant. Yeah. I'm just saying that I, like Courtney said, I always, I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. I put out good energy. We'll talk about this by Madewell. This is a collaboration. <laughs> uh, into apparel. Nice, nice. Um, you know, I just believed in just putting good energy out there. And I just knew that karma is a real thing. And yeah. when you when you do well, you know, it'll come back to you tenfold. Good and things come back. Good things good come people. back to good people. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And also, like, you know, I know this is true for me with regard to females in real estate. Like, I feel like when you show people and you li you actually live by the standards that you're 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 selling you know what i'm saying like not only am i saying it cuz i'll be honest i have been in a lot of conferences with a lot of people who really enjoy being the only woman in the room they don't want competition from people like me they don't really want me to have a voice cuz it takes away from them as far as they can see and and that's not me i'm always there lifting up leadership and and, and training and and supporting financial independence for women and I live by it and it's real and similarly it's like you get the opportunity to show people what's possible yeah. and really like live it yeah yeah and yeah. that's so inspiring and so cool yeah thank you you know my biggest barrier to entry for a lot of people of color I would argue as well um, it was the uh, down payment right that was my biggest barrier into into home ownership and you know to be able to go from you know we always had a job and you know whatever but to be able to create a business that allowed me to have a down payment to you and I to go out, you know, and find a home. Yeah. I mean, it was just a blessing. I, I remember, you know, we used to drive up and down a lot of the neighborhoods and we'd see people of a similar age with a stroller, you know, kids. And we're like, how do they do that? Yeah. Like, you know, why can't we went to college and we did the whole thing. And why can't we have that, too? It just doesn't make sense. But a lot of times, you know, in the African-American community. When people make it, we often give money back to our families as opposed to them giving us money, mm -hmm. right? So I didn't have family help or anything like that. Not to say everyone has family help, but, you know, a lot of my friends who did buy, they had a lot of family help. L right. Lots of people do. Yeah. 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 I yeah. mean, it's, you know, it, yeah. and you will probably have money to help your kids, so, you know what I mean? And, that, and, I, and, and to your point, I think that's the beauty of it is that I'm positioning myself to where hopefully, you know, Harper and, and, and my future child are coming Coming one. soon. On Coming. the way in March. Whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. It's a month of March. Um, you know, we'll be in a position where they can say, hey, dad, can I have X amount of dollars? I want to buy a home, too. So right. that's what I'm doing everything now to kind of set that up and that generational wealth. You can take the equity out of your current home by the time they buy a house. We already you talked about it. We already talked about <laughs> There you go. There you go. You know, I think what's amazing about this story is, like, how you really have been the architect of your life yeah. in it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you really took what some people would take and feel like, okay, well, I'm deflated. I don't know where to go from here. And they, you know, things could have gone south. Sure. You were like, I'm going to create a new opportunity. Yeah. And not only am I going to create that opportunity, but I'm going to turn that opportunity into Thank you. many opportunities. Mm -hmm. And Thank I you. think that is Thank amazing. Yeah. It's crazy what you'll do when your back is against the wall. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, I think the power of saying no is very important, but also the power of saying yes. And not being afraid just to take that chance and say, you know what? I have nothing to lose. I'm going to try. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it my all. And, and if we fall, we fall. You know, I'm not going to die. Like, it's all good. Like, we'll get back up and we'll go at it again. Um, but there, thankfully, it paid when, off. Well, I was just going to say that, like, there were so many points during yeah. that, like, starting moment where you were just getting the company off the ground and you had taken that big order. Yeah. And you were trying to figure out how to make that happen where you could have, you know, like, walls were put up. Sure. Hurdles were put up. And instead of, like, 
oh shoot, hurdle, can't, you know, turned around, you jumped over the hurdle. And that actually reminds me a lot of what we do in our business too, because, you know, we find a lot of people who do throw hurdles in front of themselves or hurdles that come up Mm -hmm. in our process. And, you know, the people who are successful in it are the ones who look for the solution to jump the hurdles, you know, and it's just, it's amazing. I think to Courtney's credit too, I think, you know, when people find a realtor, they've got to be able to connect with their realtor as well. Um, she had an energy that I liked. I often joke with my wife, like, I, I tell her if I was a white woman, I'd be Courtney, right? Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we all <laughs> I will take that. I appreciate Like, we had very you. similar, like, you know, you know, you know, we got it out the mud, right? Like, it, <laughs> nothing was handed to us. Like, we had to go out and get it. And even throughout our entire process of, you know, bidding against a lot of people. And, you know, she always was like, don't give up. She didn't have to tell me that because I wasn't. But, like, she always was like... Let's do this. Let's do. Let's strategize. Let's do this. Let's do that. And shout out to Aisha too for writing all those paperwork. <laughs> Whatever. She write a lot. Um, yeah, yeah. But um, you know, I just, I just feel that if if you're gonna do that kind of a transaction with someone, then that big, um, you've got to like that person. You know. Yeah. And shout yeah, out to Leslie true. too, Leslie Black. Um, I'm sorry. I know <laughs> you guys. She's one of our no, no, we love her. We love her. Yeah, and I always say that too. I'm like, your agent needs to be somebody you want to hang with because you will be spending so much time with them. Yeah. They become your I saw Courtney your family. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. 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 I mean, it's like fighting a war together, yeah. especially in that kind of a market where yeah. like it's like you're trying to get in where you can fit in. You yep. got to be creative. Yep. You're writing letters. You're doing all the things. I mean, yep. Gatsby did beautiful watercolors, yeah. remember, yeah. for the houses and things. But at the end of the day, like in a seller's market like that, like it always comes down to, to money. money. It always. just always does. Yeah. Emotion aside, it's like. Oh, hold on. Let me say something that you taught me, too. Oh, <laughs> to all the buyers out there that are worried about being the second offer that's on the list. I'm telling you, it's a good place to be. And here's why. When they start looking at that money under that microscope, it starts looking real funny under the light for some people, and they fall out of escrow. And next thing mm-hmm. you know, you're first up, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah. we had that happen a couple of times yeah. where people like, you're number two on the list, but this person may fall out, and they did, yeah. right? So like, don't don't be discouraged. I mean, it's definitely, I don't ever think it's a bad time to buy. I really don't. No, I agree. I'd buy in this market if I could. Yeah. This is a great market mm-hmm. to buy in. This is the best market mm-hmm. to buy in. Yeah, this is where you don't have the million dollars over asking. Right. You and know, tons of competition. Yeah. I've seen houses like normally back when I bought, like I still look, because I, I, I go to open houses because I like to see the design aesthetics that people do. I see houses where I'm like, I'll even call, call, call Courtney. I'll be like, yo, this house would have been off the market in three days. Yep. Like, it's three yeah. weeks and it's still here. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah, it's like, such an opportunity yeah, space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, oh, we yeah. spend a lot of our time trying to encourage people to get off the fence because of because it is so good right now. Yeah, just refinance. But yeah, exactly, just refinance. Yeah. And your property value has gone yeah. way up it has, since you bought it. Especially with the alterations that I've made and stuff like that. Heck yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's another thing too, like, when you're looking for a house, like, you've got to take an L somewhere. Like, people don't really, like, like, now, I didn't have all the money in the world, right? But I had a good amount of money, you know, to be able to put down. But even with that, you're not going to walk into a house that's just, like, perfect. perfect. No. And it doesn't matter what range you're in. Even it doesn't matter, huh? Even if wishes they had 10. Yeah, it doesn't matter. True. You'll never find exactly. Where's the eighth bathroom? The yeah, like yeah. although yeah. that Mila Kunis yeah. house that pretty much approximates my dream house. Yes. And that's twelve that mil. So if anybody out there wants to go in on it with, yeah, yes, but what I learned is like even though you're going to take an L, what you also realize too is there's credits that you can get from the sellers because mm-hmm. we negotiated that, mm-hmm. um, and then also too if you're going to spend twenty, fifty, whatever thousand dollars, you're not going to miss it. I don't mean to sound crazy. I know it sounds like a wild number, but like when you're doing no. renovations on your home and you need that, if you need a new roof or if you want to add that bedroom or extend whatever, when it's all said and done, just view it as a bad night in Vegas. Like you're not going to No, but miss wait. It. No. You know what? It's an, it, you get more out of it. Yeah, you, that's get more, you get more out of it. You're exactly. going to get paid back for it. Exactly. You know? It's not like shopping for value. expensive yeah, shoes. Yeah. Value. It's like yep. that money's going to yep. come back to you when you sell. It's an yep. improvement we can list. An appraiser can see it. And the, you consult it with me on what are the proper things to invest in right now that are going to get me the return on my investment. Right. As opposed to me just saying, I'm going to do this and I get no money out of that. Right. Like you told me the things I was going to get money out of. Come wow, on, you are like, like a wild like, night in Vegas, but you bet well. But yeah. you bet well. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. bet well. Exactly. Yeah. No, when it comes back to you, it, that's that's always the key to, to doing repairs and renovations. Nothing too specific and make sure that it's something that buyers, future buyers will value. Unless you want to just write it off as a bad night in Vegas, right? right. Yeah. Right. Unless. But but with rent, with your mortgage, you're not throwing it away. With your improvements, right. you're not throwing it away. It's all going to come back 
to you when you sell. Yeah. So different than the psychology of um, of renting. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just a totally different thing when you're investing in yourself. Yep. And as a business owner, as a as a self employed person, that tax break that you get is critical. Absolutely. I mean, it's huge. One hundred percent. Yeah, we just dealt with that. Whatever. Yeah, it's. You know, we have a lot of self-employed people here in L.A. You yeah. Know? Um, so that's very important. And don't think that just because you're self-employed that the banks are going to look at you crazy and that you can't get approved for a loan. Like, I'm living proof you can. Like, trust me. Leslie Black, we fund L.A. Um, <laughs> Um, She's been on our show. Shameless <laughs> Have you seen the episodes I have, with Leslie? I have. I have. That's she why I knew it would be okay to shout to her out. She's like, what? Yeah, yeah. She can. She can really like. No, she got super creative. She, know, she definitely made it happen very quickly. Um, yep. You know, I'm actually going to meet with her um, next week. Um, you know, I've never met Leslie in person. You haven't? Yeah, we always uh, you know spoken on the phone. Whatever. Like we're like close. It's like it's weird. It's like we talk and stuff like that because we definitely want to get involved with something else. And I called her. The, I was like, Leslie. You loan me all this damn money. We never met in person. We're going to meet for coffee. Like, so she was like, yes, let's do it. And she's right around the corner for me. So it's great. Well, I yeah. hadn't met her in person until she came on the podcast. Wow. Yeah. 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 And so, you guys have done millions of dollars worth of yeah. money. We've done yeah. lots of deals. Yeah. 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 It sometimes happens that way. She's busy. Yeah. It's that voice on the other end of the line. Yeah. Line. Super Don't professional. Ready to go. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm so inspired by your story. And Thank we're going to put um, anything you can tell us about the future projects yeah, that you're working yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do have some stuff uh, happening right now. So. Um, I have a large uh, collection coming with a very large retailer. I can't say the name because of NDAs, but be on the lookout for that. I'll definitely advertise that. Uh, and it'll say like Walker, no. Oh, it's going to say yeah, Walker, okay, no. Gotcha. You know, with four or so and so. Um, I have a collection with Yeti with the thermal, the you know, coming out um, this the holidays. So that's going to be nice. I did about like four designs for them, which is going to be great. Cool. Made while cool. selling right now. Um, I just jumped into kids. So I'm, I've done some more cool stuff for kids. Yeah. Like bibs and onesies and all the, <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm definitely inspired to do that. Right. Um, yeah. So that's coming. Um, what else off the top of my head? A lot of stuff dealing with national parks and also the national park you know, whole department and all that kind of stuff. That's going to oh, be big. that's different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's big. So it's like graphics for... Yeah, so um, really quick, just a little background. My wife was... She's black. She was adopted by a white family from Brazil. And, you know, I grew up in a very urban, you know, community. So I didn't grow up going to national parks and hiking. You know, I used to call hiking dramatic walking, right? Um, <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, like, you know, I didn't you know, know about it. And so ever since being married to her, I started doing all of these things that really weren't a part of my, you know, growing up. So I've visited so many national parks and camping and hiking and just doing it all. And I've fallen in love with it. And so a large part of my inspiration, as you can see in my art, with like is the land is nature. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's almost like... Like, it's almost new to me in a weird way. I can tell you all about cities and every city in the world and, you know, stuff like that. But when the first time I went to Joshua Tree, for example, I was like, it's like another planet. Mm -hmm. Or like Bryce Canyon yes. or something like that. You so know, you, you see the hoodoos and you're like, what? Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's where a lot of, like, the inspiration comes from. And so because of that, I've kind of taken on, not on purpose, but I've kind of become like, hey, black people like nature too. Like, we're here. Like, I have a Subaru. Um, you know. <laughs> We're that a part of this world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, don't do it. it. We're a part of this world. Super, if you're listening, let's do something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I just want to know that, you know, national parks and hiking and nature and the great outdoors is for everyone. And um, because of that, I think that it's caught the attention of a lot of people. And because of that, we've now created partnerships and collaborations and to do stuff. That is amazing. Just love it. Oh, so I love it. Yeah. I love Technically, it. Technically, the sky's the limit. Yeah. The sky's the limit. I, I just yeah. really believe He's that. He's inspired. I, I feel like you're about to there. light the fire under Word. so many people. I hope so. Yeah. This. I yeah. really yeah. do. Yeah. Where can we find you online where would yes. you like us to follow you yes yes so walkernoble.com that's walker n-o-b-l-e.com at walker noble studios on instagram i haven't done tiktok yet i just don't yeah i know you can only be good at so many things you yeah know? <laughs> it's hard it's hard right because i'm transitioning to like reels because i know i have to but it's like it's good for creators but not really for creatives like yeah because i don't know what i'm going to do with like an art print like i'm not going to dance yeah. right like hey buy this art print you know yeah so i'm trying to have, yeah. have your kid dance that would be weird yeah right then, yeah yeah right. yeah, yeah cute, kid, cute yeah. kids and cats are really <laughs> this is true on this is Instagram, true so. that's what tiktok's there for cute cat videos. there you go there that's you go it. boom yeah so just be on the lookout you know go to walker noble studios on instagram i'm always gonna you know post whatever collaborations we have coming up we have some great great collaborations I think you guys will be excited about 
And um, can't wait. We're just growing. Yeah. yeah. So Thank cool. you so Thank much you. for joining Thank us on the Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. His whole like narrative. I mean, it was happening in real time while we were searching for a house, and what that interview just said to me as a real estate agent, and I'm honored by flattered by the things that he was saying, is that the the knowledge and the thinking and the you know, strategizing and all the things I'm saying are actually landing. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, like he got it mm -hmm. and it's it. game changing. And, you know, I foresee a, uh, a real estate empire in his future. A hundred percent. Yeah. He's got the bug. Yeah. 100%. But you know, it's like, again, not to bring it back to training all the time, but you know, it's like sometimes when we're talking to agents, um, and training new agents, it's like we're saying, look, you got to find the opportunity. You got to find the space. Like, don't let anyone tell you no. You know, like, figure out what makes you special and you valuable mm -hmm. and take that, you know. But you, there's a that, fire that you have to have burning in within you. That's though. true. And we're all come out of this, like, constitution. Like, we're all come out of this, like, school that puts you in that box. And we're all have to figure out how to break out in life and, and, walk our own path it's true yeah, yeah. I think and walk it nobly that was good was that punny that was really that was funny. good that was good okay thanks. <laughs> i guess it's not just fly puns we've got <laughs> <laughs> but puns on the fly oh <laughs> <laughs> no but you know what like i i just am so inspired by him mm -hmm. and everything that he was just talking about and everything he's done i think the thing that resonated most with me out of what he was saying is you know not taking no for an answer and not mm -hmm. seeing hurdles as you know roadblocks that prevented him from you know going on he found his way around those things yeah and i think that he should speak to everyone who thinks that they are disempowered in some mm -hmm. way totally you know because that is an empowered man. Like mm -hmm. that, that, that ballsy move when that call came, we need 25,000 units. He could have said, uh, sorry, can't. But he's right. like, that's all? Right. Okay. Right. Exactly. And that yeah. is that moment of where, like, you need to have some future vision. You have to, of your, yeah. Like, you, you have you, to have a little bit of, like, vision, right? right. To, like, okay, we'll do it. We'll when things do it. seem so out of reach, it's easy for people to imagine there's no distance between me and my little 500 credit score and $2,000 that I've barely scraped from the past couple of years of working so hard, you know, mm -hmm. to the house in the hills. But in fact, there is completely a path to that. You just haven't looked hard enough. You haven't found it yet, you know? And I think that like when I, when I, when we were working together and we were trying to figure things out, you know, there were a lot of moments where he's like, okay, so if I do this, is this a short-term plan? Is this a long-term? Like he was, he was thinking about what the future part of what he wants as the outcome is going to look like. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to figure out if this house or that house fits into that plan. So we were looking at houses and writing on houses that were totally renovated at first. And those are the ones that had the multiple offers and, you know, we we're competing with cash and, um, you know, yeah. whatever. And so the house that he got ha needed some updating and he turned it into a partnership that now has a photo spread. So when we go to sell that house, we get to share that this was published you know, and had all of these choices and fit and finished on a, like an opportunity maker. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, I mean, that, I'm sure that that's that huge. is something that a lot of self-made successful people have in common, but it certainly was, uh, it was a joy to help him and his family. And I, and I appreciate the respect and love and, uh, admiration he has for his wife. And he's so proud to be a dad and has another one on the way. It's just like, as real estate agents, we get to be partners on some level with our clients in these like major milestone events and really have an impact. So we should never underestimate our power in changing yep. people's lives. It's a privilege to too. It's a privilege to be part of our clients' lives. It is. Yeah. I don't take it lightly. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, we will see <laughs> you next time on Under All Is The Land. Bye. 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 Tell your friends. Under All Is The Land, real, real, real estate. Courtney and your friends about to show you how to generate wealth. Get educated. Do for yourself. Add a couple notches to your belt. Under All Is The Land.